you really gotta love how creative Dingo Pictures slash Phoenix Games got with some of their rip-off titles. This isn't the Country Bears, it's the Country Side Bears. <sighs> Why the damn hell am I talking about Dingo again? The Countryside Bears is one of the Dingo Pictures movies that seems to be a PS2 exclusive release, and I'm sure it was the killer app for the system in Europe. Like all the PlayStation 2 versions of these things, probably maybe, this was published by Phoenix Games, and they really went all out on these next-gen not-really games. In addition to the coloring crap and slide puzzles, you also get a regular puzzle! And just look at those graphics! That's right, we've got gradients in there! That's that's the power of the PlayStation 2, bitch! Sorry for the potty mouth. I got a little carried away in my excitement. Fuck. Countryside Bears was released in 2004, just two years after the mega shit no one cares about, The Country Bears. Considering what a flop The Country Bears was, it was a bit of an odd choice for them to try and cash in on that. Dingo probably starred this really early on, before realizing that a Country Bears ripoff might sully their good name. Though besides it not being all that bright of a choice to try and cash in on a movie that only made around half of its budget at the box office, it was also a live action movie. Which of course meant Dingo couldn't just easily trace their crappy versions of the characters for their movie, and had to create new ones. By which I of course mean they just reused and modified characters from their other mockbuster films. Massive sarcasm quotes. And while they invoke the Country Bear's name, they don't actually try to use any of its plot really at all. It's more Winnie the Pooh meets the fuck. A.K.A. random crap they thought of on the spot. Ah! Wabu! This damn raccoon is Wabu, the cheeky raccoon! Though sometimes he's known as the little raccoon, and he's a ripoff of Miko from Disney's Pocahontas. And Wabu is pretty much the mascot of Dingo Pictures' knockoff lineup. While Dingo tends to reuse their character models all the time, Wabu seems to be the one character they particularly liked moving around from one ripoff to another. So, unsurprisingly, Wabu also showed up in Dingo's version of Pocahontas and even had his own movie. Wabu also hops around like a kangaroo. Because raccoons do that, you know. Halloween. Halloween? -er? That's seriously the first line of the movie? Halloween, hello Yodel. Yes, one of the country shit bear's names is Yodel. Guess what he likes to do? Yodel, you. Hello, Wabu. Nice of you to visit us. Yes, I was out for a walk and I thought, I wonder what Teddy, Weena, Yodel, and Pat are up to. But mostly I wanted to come by and remind you guys of what your names are, especially Weena. What a Weena! <laughs> What is Teddy doing? 
Teddy's visiting Grumpy. Boy, there's a Grumpy Bear. Are we throwing Care Bears into this dingo nonsense too now? We must Care Bear stare you now, yes. <laughs> What the damn hell? Vina has a new book, and she's going to read to us. One of them has a German accent? <laughs> I never would have expected that from the Dingo Pictures voice cast. Every day one of us will go and visit him. No, I'm sure you won't, but don't say that. Oh, come on. I know there's only like four people doing the voices on these things, but you're seriously going to give two of the bears the exact same voice? Well, now this might get confusing. Grumpy will be insulted and have another reason to be grumpy. Good, then I'll go and visit Grumpy. You guys following this plot so far? The raccoon wants to make the grumpy bear grumpy. Just to be an ass. I would say that I'd expect better from Wabu, but apparently being an asshole is his modus operandi, as according to Dingo Pictures' own website, Wabu's personal quote is... Most of the animals are so stupid. See you later, Rabu. Did you all just call him Rabu? Uh, close enough. Shut it up, I am the Rabu. A cop thing here and there, and what the devil are so dear. Dumpy dumpy doo, I don't wear any shoes. Dumpy doopy da, you don't be shooby dooby doo. You might be wondering why it sounds like Wabu is singing over himself. I'm guessing Dingo either forgot to keep the voiceless music track for the Wabu song, so they just lazily slapped the English version over the German one, or they just forgot to remove the German singing. This happens every time Wabu does his little I'm bouncing to another location song, too. That's, That's a new level of laziness for Dingo. I'm impressed. Song interrupting bear! Yeah, Grumpy here must really be seen interrupting Bear's brother as it's the same damn bear colored brown with overalls. They really know how to keep the excitement going in these things, don't they? Hello, Grumpy. Hello, Wabu. Oh, good! More hellos! Can you get to a damn point?! I'm wondering how long my honey supply will last if the weather doesn't improve. The stakes have never been lower! And after counting Grumpy's honey jars, I've come to the conclusion- My god, a spy! <laughs> that reminds me, when everyone talks about honey, I get hungry! I'm sorry that I can't give you any, Teddy, but I really don't think that my supply will last long for you. What an asshole. For you. When they could visit me, Mo is bound to have something for us to eat. That's a good idea, Wabu. Was Lion and the King, like, seriously the pinnacle for these jackholes actually trying to match the lip flaps in their English version of these movies? Damn hell, that's sad. Just so you don't think I'm impolite or stingy, let me lend you my umbrella. <laughs> With wind like this, you never know whether or not it'll start raining. Oh man, Wabu was having none of that. What an attitude. Too drunk for the naked eye. Wabu the... Wait, he is a raccoon, right? He knows that too, right? So Grumpy Bear needs to get Care Bear stared or something while he or she, I don't really know, eats honey. And a bee watches and where is the plot? I know this is Dingo Pictures, but holy shit! Ooh, 
an actual kangaroo. This is gonna be awkward for you. All right, now here we got Kanga and Roo, kinda, but it's okay because they've been given lobotomies, so they're different enough. And whenever she's bored, she sulks. I wouldn't be bored or sulky if I was allowed to go out and walking in the wind, but Mama won't let me. It's too dangerous. But if Teddy and Wabu were to accompany me, then maybe I could go out walking? Will this kangaroo get to go for a walk in the wind? The answer? Answer might just put you into a coma in the countryside bears. The branch could break off in this wind and fall on me and injure her. Oh, that Wabu don't give no shits if a branch falls on me. I don't mean me. I mean me. <laughs> Fuck, this joke sucks. Me also has to take an umbrella because of the wind. Wind is rain, pretty much, I suppose, in the Blunder Acre wood. The umbrella hinders me when I hop. Maybe the umbrella won't disturb you so much if you open it. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense if you don't think about it. Well, she's dead, let's go. Me, where are you off to? Like, who does she think she is, Kangaroo Poppins? <coughs> For you. This, of course, is just one of those freak forest winds that can pick up a kangaroo, but manages to not really disturb the trees. Weird, right? It's almost like Dingo doesn't actually animate their stock backgrounds or something. I told you science was making progress to make us all fly science! You would almost think that this crow is coming in to help, but you forget. It's just a background character that is only here to laugh randomly and not actually affect the plot. So this stupid kid dying ain't its problem. If I were to open my umbrella, I could fly to me and then bring her back down. Yeah, that's a good idea. Nah, of course plan get two people ludicrously stuck in the air goes off without a hitch. And, uh, yeah, then they are both somehow stuck in the air. But the teddy bear can do extra nonsense spinning, so that's, uh, something. Hello, Mama! Where are you, me? I never learned how to tell what direction a sound is coming from. I'm up here! Did you hear that? She must be here somewhere. She said she was up, but I keep looking straight ahead and I don't see her. I don't get it! Yes, above you. <gasps> Don't be afraid, Teddy's with her. He'll probably crash into her at some point and we can finally be rid of them. Oh, good. Wait. Oh! You disgusting piece of bear trash. Don't eat so much, Grumpy. I see you. Huh? Otherwise your honey stock really won't last. Ghosts. I'm hearing ghosts! Can we find this forest and nuke it off the face of the planet? I don't care that it's not real, just do it! Hello, Grumpy! That's my umbrella that Teddy's hanging from. It wasn't made for that. Sorry, Grumpy, but you'll get it back for sure. I don't believe that. Way to make it all about you, bear hole! <laughs> and it won't matter to anyone if I get wet in the future. I hope that bear does get wet in the future because that will mean that I was expecting! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Fooled you guys on that one! Uh oh, now it's gonna.
gonna happen? It's happened. When bears and kangaroos get caught in trees with umbrellas, the happening zero. Wabu then decides to go tell the title bears about what is seriously the plot of their movie. I mean, they might as well get a little involved with it, right? How can the wind catch anybody? Me opened her umbrella and got swept up by the wind. And then Teddy wanted to do the same to save her. But Teddy didn't have an umbrella with him. Yes, he did. But... First, we need to go over every single point of how this happened. It's very complicated and there's no rush. Poor Teddy, he must be hungry. And probably worried about that little thing of falling to his death. But I suppose he might need a snack on his way to the afterlife. After more explaining, they finally leave to go see the dynamic duo stuck up in the trees, at which point they have to explain how the wind took them to this point. If they jump, they're bound to hunjin themselves. Hygien themselves? Have you been drinking? Give me some. I don't have any umbrella anymore. The one that Teddy's hanging from was my only one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And here I thought the problem was my kid might die, but I didn't think of the real tragedy of you being out an umbrella. He can climb up the tree and free them. I can climb too. Science! If you'd asked me, I would not have said no. But then, nobody asked me. Ha <laughs> That stupid, pathetic bear being a shit climber makes me forget my child's peril! The branch is too thin. If I crawl out along it, it will break and we'll all fall down. Sounds win-win to me. Let's get a blanket and stretch it out. Then Teddy and me only have to fall and we'll catch them. Now that I've lent Teddy my umbrella, which is probably going to get broken, I can go and fetch my blanket too and break that as well. Are you sure this bear's name is Grumpy? Because it seems much more like a shitty bear rather than a grumpy bear. Let's call it Shitty Bear. I could help, but I won't. Me should jump first. She's not as heavy as Teddy. That's a good idea. Then I can see whether Me gets hurt or not. And if she does get hurt, then Wiener can come up with something new. Oh, I didn't realize that Teddy was related to Shitty Bear. Here is my only blanket. Nothing is going to happen to your blanket, Grumpy. Oh no! I can wash your blanket, don't worry, Grumpy. Phew, I was worried about my blanket. You guys forgot about me! Me! The end! Oh, of course I'm joking. I mean, that would leave the story incomplete. The second story of the animals that were too stupid to live is about a hole in the woods. This is so serious, it gets the dramatic dingo music. But which of us would dig a hole in the middle of the night? When I was me, I was, I was sleeping. Me too. And Teddy and Yodel and Weena too. It wasn't me or Mo either. Me is not allowed out at night and Mo never goes out because otherwise she would leave me alone. I can't imagine that it could be Grumpy because Grumpy is a really lazy bear. <laughs> you need to hop like a proper raccoon! Mom, we're not raccoons! What? So more 
whole interrogations commence and no joke blanket updates. I thought Mo was going to mend my damaged blanket. That's what I want to do, Grumpy. Let the others go ahead and we'll come a little later. But I want to go now. Mama, may I go? Okay, if you stay together, nothing can happen. Just like nothing happened last time! I'm so smart! It's up ahead. My god! A glass of water! Oh, is the trap. Big enough for a small bear. Or a raccoon. And for a little kangaroo. <laughs> Or to bury a crow who has nothing better to do than follow us around and laugh all the time. With their powers combined, who is really surprised that the plan they come up with is to walk by the hole like they don't know it's there to see if it tries anything. This is why the Kangakoon and the Countryside Bears are both extinct species. If you stay together, nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. The trap that I found is a baby kangaroo trap. And me fell into it. Must they always rush? Nobody ever is considering my feelings. How could this happen to me? Everyone else made my mistakes. I got no umbrella for wind. Are you down there? Hello, Mama! She's still alive? Shit! Of course she could just hop out. Well, this second story sure was pointless, wasn't it? And it sure is impressive to feel pointless compared to the first part of the movie, which was extremely pointless! But oh wait, I forgot, there's still the great mystery of who dug this hole! Who is the great mysterious mind behind this- Oh, Thumper did it. Cool! They're building a road where I used to live, so I had to dig myself a new home. It's a really dangerous house, like, I, I mean, for example, I could be out walking and, um, suddenly... Awa! Please be dead, please be dead! Did you hurt yourself or badly? Yeah, but I'll be all right. You never fail to disappoint, Dingo. Maybe we should put up a sign. One that says no entry. How can I have visitors when I have a no entry sign up? I hardly have any visitors, even though I have no sign saying no entry. It's almost like you're an asshole or something. Weird. Then we just write, this is my house. We'll write it in German, though, because that's what we're all speaking now. Yes? My God! What the shit is that? You animate the raccoon hopping better than whatever the damn hell that is. Oh, ow, uh, my leg, ow. Let's eat him, survival of the fittest. Simply because- Ah, oh, my eye, I'm infected with asshole flu virus. The Asimals then go pick some flowers. It's as exciting as it sounds. Then they plant the flowers at Shitty Bear's place so the lazy fuck can get honey. Sure, they could have properly planted some flowers there so that they'd actually last instead of these ones that'll be dead soon since they picked them, but that'd require brain cells. And I'm not gonna have any of those left by the time I'm through with this. Yes, this is how honey is made, folks. Bees come by and slurp at the flowers with their lips. So, really, I suppose we should be pretty happy with Dingo's dog and otter dinosaurs when this is their understanding of animals that still exist. 
I wish that Wabu would tell us a story about the time before he came to live with us. Oh, thank you, Dingo Pictures. I was worried that the Slurpy Bee segment might have been the end of this disjointed mess of a movie, but now you can show us the true nature of the laziness by just having Wabu tell us a recycled animation story. You can even notice that there's a slight quality change here, probably due to this being another general of a copy. And yeah, this is a shortened part of the Wabu movie itself. Because truly, we've had too much Countryside Bears in this Countryside Bears movie. One day, Wabu watched as Wushel, the squirrel. I thought Wabu was telling this story. Oh wait, that would have required actually changing something to make this actually fit. I'm so silly. Hey, what's your, what are you so hectic about? Hey, what's your hectic? ch 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 bad chat because they'll miss red. What the hell? How am I supposed to bring all the nuts home? Why don't you suck these nuts? So then, uh, I don't know. I think Wabu plans to kill the squirrel? I mean, what else do you take from this? You've meddled in my plans for the last time, dogs. <laughs> wow, raccoon feet are a lot like snap bracelets. Remember those? <laughs> I'm losing it. Anyway, because this squirrel is a lazy bastard who doesn't want to have to drag his nuts around as far, Wabu chops a tree down, despite the protests of the locals. <laughs> Cries and screams are music to my ears. Child murderer! Child murderer! <laughs> now who's the stupid animal, Wabu? I can't say I expected to hear cries of child murderer when watching the Countryside Bears. Then again, I'm not really watching the Countryside Bears anymore. I'm watching Wabu the Axe Murderer. I knew it would come to this one day. Yeah. Oh man! Scene interrupting bear and King Magad have become the ultimate fusion! CHILD MURDER INTERRUPTING BEAR! I'm not taking the fall for this. It was all Chip and Chap's fault. How fast look? Everyone began to sniff and to search. Rip off Peter Gunn theme? Well... That's another thing I didn't expect. The searching for babies' bodies scene. Wabu took the cracked egg in his hand, and as he sadly looked at it... Yes, sadly. It's just being born. Well, Wabu gets away with murder. At least attempted murder, but everyone is just happy that the baby is still alive. Except Magad Bear. He just lost out on making delicious Wabu bites. I'm, 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 I'm here under the tree. Oh, nice. It looks like Wabu could still go down for murder. This is a good story. Even Bambi's got to see this jackass go down. Wishel tried to move a branch, but the pain that shot through him was so bad that everything went black. Wishel passed out because of the pain. <laughs> wow. That is amazing that someone passing out due to pain is even in this cartoon, but they just had to go that extra dingo mile and play wah wah music over it. <laughs> that is so stupid. I love it. 
I've known all along Wabu is a danger to us all. I must hunt him. No, you cannot hunt other animals. You don't tell me what to do. No. Yes. Fuck. After the usual dingo pictures scene of morons standing around explaining things that just happened for the people that dared to try and get away from their barely animated films for a few seconds, a mole eventually finds Chap's corpse! But good, there lies Bushel. Oh, my apologies, I guess I lied. His name's Bushel or something. Bushel, Bushel! Oh dear, I think Bushel is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story of why I had to move away. <laughs> And thus our tale ends as it began, pointlessly and aimlessly. So, I guess this is what happens when Dingo tries to make too original of a story. They forget to have an actual story. This was just a series of minor events happening, and even for a Dingo Pictures movie, this was a confusing watch, even though it was barely even about anything! They get stuck up! They get stuck down! They get stuck helping an asshole! And then they get nothing with reused animation! This also might as well have been called Wabu 2, as it certainly wasn't about the stupid country fuck bears! Hell, they aren't even a part of the last segment of the movie! The only thing the countryside bears even accomplished in this movie was picking flowers. And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three. I fail it, so whoopie dooby doo, and I don't really have a good ending for you. For you. Dalmatians 3? Magon!